there like looking and looking and looking and I found somewhere nestled in a piece of code where there's a limit to the number of concurrent processes at 25 and it was hardwired in there. <laughs> that's amazing. And I said, wow, that's really, oh, so I guess when I created those 200 threads, I guess that, uh, it's a bit of a problem. It's a bit of a problem. <laughs> Like we were just talking about, um, with cell, we take that same philosophy if we want to optimize, uh, we optimize the entire system or just parts of the applications that you're uh, mainly interested in. Um, you can also optimize the kernel or just certain parts of the kernel if you want. Um, one thing right now that we're working, we want to get working is, are you guys familiar with case splice? You guys seen that? No, I guess. Uh, yeah. Rings a bell. Case Splice is a pretty cool product right now. It's working with Ubuntu. I've got it on here right now, where you don't have to reboot your kernel. Oh, you don't have to reboot yeah. anymore. It applies the patches in real time, and your system is back up with the latest code. That only works with GCC right now. We've been talking to them. We hope, hope to get that working with uh, ICC at some point, though. Another side project. So it would be great if we could get a repo out there for PGO stuff out there. Once again, repos are incredible amount of work. We want people to help us on that. If we can, that would be awesome. Um, we could also have PGO aware processes of uh, packages that you could just download and all of a sudden it just starts learning just like that. That would give you, you know, a head up, a, at least a step uh, that you didn't have to really worry about before. So those are two things that would be uh, interesting for us to do. So, like I was saying, you can't do this with closed source because that source is not yours. It's on your laptop, you bought it, but guess what? It's not yours. Real tease right there. I don't know what that is, but that's not what I thought when I bought Windows originally. Um, so, so um, closed source software, uh, cannot have this kind of optimization because uh, you cannot have that code to compile. You can't custom say, oh, this would be nice if I could actually make a little bit. No, nope, you can't do that. So that's one of the things that we like about our projects is it really gives you an extra dimension to the freeness, or it exposes you rather to an extra dimension of the freeness that you can have with open source software. Um, and once again, these are not placebo, these are real measurable effects. That <coughs> we do have some benchmarks out there. Um, LinuxDNA.com slash benchmarks.pdf of uh, 2.6.32, I believe is the latest one, where in context switching with Ellen Bench, we've got 150% increase in speed in that particular scenario for an atom based processor, which means that you get a lot better, basically breaks down so you have a lot better multitasking with your systems. And you know that's a big, big thing that you want because if you if you're going to add like this with one gig of RAM, things get crazy. Um, so we don't believe that binary blobs cut it anymore. Um, they're floaty, and you just bought a three thousand dollar server in the back room. It's doing one thing. It's a web server. It's hanging out, and it's just kind of taking up space for the rest of the time. So GCC. Uh, excuse me, GPC is not what you were looking for for that scenario. You can cut down that, make it into an appliance, and then once you've got something that compact, you can actually make it more manageable by throwing it in a hypervisor like uh, VMware, and then you've got something that's both manageable and fast at the same time. Um, so we think it's a bad business strategy. Um, so it's a solution that's cheaper, and greener, um, and a lot of times what you're looking for in the first place. Once again, um, Lil Yuji is the head of development. Couldn't have been done without him. He's the one who got it working in the first place. Um, and he does amazing things. Baylon Wang was the guy that I worked with originally. Uh, Intel, he's the main liaison that I've 
filed one of the reports and, and asked questions with, um, and got us the pro version of the compilers from Intel. I'd like to thank Intel very much for being a big part of this project. Obviously, it couldn't exist without Intel. Um, Onward SGI, thank you very much for giving us access to the biggest computer I've ever been on, um, which is on, <laughs> uh, which is an Altix uh, 4700 Numa true supercomputer, which a Numa is different from a cluster, if you will, because a Numa can see all the CPU, excuse me, all the memory, all the CPU see all the memory uniformly and can get any of that memory globally instead of a uh, cluster which has memory tied to a certain CPU that interconnects to the next system like that. Um, once again, Xi Feng is uh, in Germany. Uh, he did the original, he made formalized the original 2.622 patch and is working with uh, 32-bit patches. There are a lot of people out there that have contributed to uh, Linux TNA on our Google group. I want to thank all of them because they've all made amazing stellar um, contributions and they keep coming out and, and helping out every single day. That's great. So, uh, getting down to Linux DNA costs, not very much because we all work at home. You know, we all have computers and that's what we do. Please donate at LinuxDNA.com. We have a PayPal account there. I think it's broke. Can somebody please check it and see if it's working? <laughs> it must be broke. <laughs> I talked to PayPal and they said it works better with larger amounts of money, larger than zero. <laughs> Um, Intel is giving us a couple in-house servers uh, in here to set up a repo and other things like that. Um, and we're going to use to manage all this VMware ESX, which is one of my favorite uh, operating system hypervisors, whatever you will, out there uh, for making uh, development much easier. You can just virtual. Oh, but, I'm sorry, blue screen. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh -huh. He has Where's that it? effect. Uh, you could just virtualize your mirror on the same box. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. That way only one of them will break if the whole system goes down. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can create a, cross, a cluster on the mirror. Uh, I want to do uh, Linux Really, I hope to have something like the motion where um, that way we've got something where, you know, if it breaks down in the U.S., all of a sudden, boom, it's up in China kind of a thing. Uh, you know, it's the real PR kind of stuff which you can do with ESX and VMware and stuff like that. Seriously, you did touch on a thing of uh, virtualizing. Is there any plans of uh, having ICC optimized Virtual appliances already compiled, ready to go. Sure, sure. I mean, is that um, out there already, or is it? Well, right now, I, the Linux DNA, we're so bare bones that we have recipes that we can spit out to people, you know, in the form of patches and, and things like that. We right. haven't really had a lot of time. We do have a development VM out there. It's just out there to show people how to use ICC to compile a kernel right now. Um, it is uh, a virtual appliance. It's a Jitsu virtual. Horribly, I have not updated it in at least a year, and shame on me, it's 32-bit, and I should have something 64-bit out there by now. But it itself is these ICC made. Right. right. Okay. Not completely. Like I said, we can't but, completely right. create a GCC, uh, ICC system. Actually, that's, that's not quite right. We almost, well, there's about two or three packages that we, we can do, but, it, um, I haven't, I haven't used it yet, but uh, Lu Yi in China has basically created a Linux from scratch, ICC compiled, completely compiled system. Um, we do have a uh, ICC compiled system out there that is older. It's not completely ICC compiled. There's still some chunks out of it that are missing, but a lot of it is ICC compiled. And that's at linuxdna.com slash linuxdnaiso. And uh, root password linuxdna. You can check that out. But 
but that's that's old school too, or this command line. It has a GUI, but it moves into a command line, and it's it's just a proof of concept kind of thing. But he does have basically an entire system for power the ICC with legacy from scratch, which is crazy because I'm not doing good. For people who may want to hear more, have you recently been on any podcasts? Yes, I've been on this kind of podcast right here. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, we talked about being a little bit of a ringer for yourself. Gee, yes. <laughs> I'm only two, what, is it two or three months since we've done it and I still haven't released it because the self ate my time? Yeah, that's, that's just karma for me missing my speech itself. <laughs> <laughs> self ate my podcast. See, <laughs> self did. Self ate my podcast. I love it. from scratch is interesting. Oh, it, um, it, it, it just, you know, it, it's a lot of work to get all that work. Nope. And then you don't really have a package manager in the background. You can, you can staple one on, but it's kind of, yeah. He wants to know where you're from. Oh, originally? I'm, I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. Then I moved to Hilton Head, Boston area, about five years ago, and now I'm in Atlanta. Yeah. What is your part of Linux today? This and that and everything. You know, I just I just get in there and there's something to do every day. You know, I help with development. Um, like I said, um, there's guys that are way above me when it comes to coding. So you, you, you do coding, the patches and such? Yeah, you know, I, I hope out. Documentation, web server, documentation, keep the lights on, liaison with IBM and SGI. Generally, make an idiot in front of large amounts of people. Well, how many de how many developers are there that are core core developers? Uh, three other than me. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Louis, uh, Max, or excuse me, uh, Joe, and and uh, Chief. And then outside the core? Uh, people come and go all the time. I uh, don't always know their names because they kind of just use you know, aliases. Uh, there's a guy named Dark Basic who created a build uh, for Gen 2 out there. And somebody else just uh, updated that AE build for ICC, for, for actually installing ICC, um, which needed to be updated because the ICC that's in Gen 2 right now is still version late 10, and it doesn't work with anything. I don't even know why it's out there. <laughs> Did you happen to sit in on Iculus's talk? On I, I left. Uh, was so I was sick. gonna say if, if you had sat in, I want I would want to know your take because I imagine you have similar kernel experiences. We should talk about that. <laughs> oh, on the political end of things. Yeah. Oh yeah, his, his speech was about his speech was titled "Anatomy of a Failure" and it was all about fat ELF and the Linux kernel. Uh -huh. Beginning of tonight's presentation, you said, "Did you start this uh, uh, project? Yeah. What is your What is your background? To, your coding background, background? Most of my coding background is theoretical. I mean, I've been in computers all my life, interested, but I I, I shy away from doc, from certifications and other stuff like that because it's here today, gone tomorrow, kind of a thing." I have been a systems administrator for about 10 years, um, and I enjoy managing code, but not necessarily writing code. Uh, I, when I get to work and somebody asks me to write a shell script, I cringe, so you know, it's not exactly. You know, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. Louie and all the other guys are much more interested in coding and are better at it. So, I, I, I understand C. I, I can write it. I don't want to write it. What's your current job? What's your day to day duties? Uh, right now, uh, I was working at a data center in Atlanta, uh, but I quit because my boss was uh, overly, overly religious about a particular piece of software and hardware. Fast becoming a monopoly and has open standards, but only for them. So I won't get into that. 
Yeah, we'll leave AMD out of it. Edited, edited so, out? Any, any what, what particular piece of software out of curiosity? Well, stuff that you can edit out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I'll look. I'll look. 